Welcome back. So this is our third example of three uh, different, uh, you know, shear stresses over three different types of cross-section members on beams. So in our first example, we looked at just a pure rectangular section uh, with transverse load. And the second example, we had a, a T-beam where the, uh, the flange is on the bottom, and now we're going to look at an I-section. Um, and just like with the previous example where, uh, with the T-beam, um, we need to find the shear stress distribution, but we're going to find it in two different ways. Uh, so the first way that we're going to go through is look at the uh, just purely mathematical. We'll come up with uh, an equation which equates uh, what our shear stress distribution is uh, based upon distance y from the uh, from the centroid. Um, and then we will, uh, in the sort of second method, what we'll do is do what's probably a more, uh, call it an engineering uh, method, where we'll just find uh, what the shear stress is at particular points and use the, um, the knowledge that we know for a, a member, a rectangular member, uh, where the uh, shear stress is uh, applied parallel uh, to an axis of symmetry, uh, well, then we're going to have a parabolic distribution. So with that, um, here's our section. So you can see it is a, uh, a doubly symmetric I section, 150 millimeters wide, 400 millimeters tall. Uh, the flanges are both 20 millimeters thick, and the web is 15 millimeters thick. And we can see from the project brief that the applied shear load uh, at this section is going to be 80 kilonewtons. And, and what we need to do is find the shear stress distribution uh, across the height of this. And so uh, before we go any further, let me just put a few uh, little coordinates on here. Uh, the uh, vertical coordinate is Y and the horizontal one is Z. And that means that uh, the X coordinate will be coming in and out of the plane. All right. So, uh, well, what do we need to do? So just like our previous example, it's always good when we approach these problems to figure out, well, for shear stress, well, what equation do we need to work with? What's our, and then what are the inputs that we need to work with that, uh, equation? So for shear stress, um, you know, the big one that we need is tau, uh, and that's just going to equal VQ over IT. Um, so Q is, uh, uh, remember that Q equals A1, Y1, which is just the, the area for a given distance. Uh, it's the area above of the section above that distance uh, times the centroid of that distance to the centroid of the member. And because we need the centroid of the member, well, we know we need to find uh, that centroid. We need y bar, uh, and we also need the moment of inertia i. So um, always a good place to start with these things is, is to get just our section properties uh, laid out. So we'll start with that. We'll just call what we, uh, we'll start with getting the um, uh, the centroid in the y direction, uh, and we'll compute it uh, with reference to this point o at the bottom corner. So we'll do that quickly. So y bar equals uh, the sum of each area times its centroidal distance uh, so that, uh, to uh, the point uh, that we're taking the centroid about over the sum of the areas. And so for uh, this member that gives us, uh, we'll start up here at the top. Uh, it's 20 millimeters thick. times 150 millimeters wide. Uh, the centroid uh, of this section is uh, is half the distance of the thickness, so that's 10 millimeters, so we'll just do, and uh, its distance to uh, our point of interest, it's just gonna be 400 millimeters minus 10. That's our first AI YI. Uh, then plus uh, this web here, uh, 15 millimeters wide uh, times 300 and 60 millimeters tall in between there. Uh, and then the distance is going to be, um, well, it's, if it's 360 tall, uh, the centroid of the rectangle is halfway distance, so that's gonna be 180 millimeters, uh, plus the thickness of this web here. So it's gonna be 180 
plus 20. And then our final uh, AI YI is just this bottom flange. Uh, and that's going to be 20 times 150 times 10. And then that's just going to get divided by the sum of the areas. So that's just going to be 20 times 150 plus 15 times 360 plus 20 times 150. Uh, and if we work all of that out, we get y bar equals 200 millimeters. And and just for a uh, a double check, uh, just uh, that sort of gut does the do the numbers make sense? Uh, yeah, they do. So we've got a doubly symmetric section. Um, if if you've done a lot of these uh, centroid calculations, you know uh, that your centroid is going to be located right in the middle of uh, those axes of symmetry. And so uh, we're, because we're symmetric about the z-axis, uh, we're going to have a centroid right at 200 millimeters. All right, so now we need to find our uh, moment of inertia about the z-axis. So, and so yz. And what we need to use to find that, because we have um, multiple uh, components here, we need to use the um, parallel axis theorem. And with the parallel axis theorem, uh, just as a reminder, that's going to be the sum of the moment of inertia of each little part plus the area of each little part times the distance of that area squared to the centroid. So we're taking, you know, the, the moment of inertia about the z-axis right at the centroid. And what I'm going to do is, because we can also sub, this is, a, we can also subtract that, I'm going to think that actually um, I want to I want to make life easy on myself. I'm going to take uh, the moment of inertia of this sort of exterior rectangle here, and then subtract out uh, these these void areas here. And because all of those are um, have their centroid cotangent with uh, uh, so collinear with the uh, uh, centroid of the section as a whole, uh, this di value uh, becomes zero. So uh, we'll just, we'll, we'll work that out explicitly uh, in case you're a little bit confused, uh, but it should become apparent really quickly. So uh, like I said, the, the first uh, section we'll take is just of the entire height and the entire width. So that's gonna be uh, for a rectangle one over 12 times 150 millimeters wide times 400 millimeters cubed uh, plus our area is 150 times 400 um, times a distance to the centroid of zero squared. So all of that cancels out to zero. Um, now we want to, we, we've taken the moment of inertia of this whole rectangle, we want to subtract out uh, what the moment of inertia contribution would be to these two voids, and then all we have left is the I section. So we minus uh, two, because we've got one, two voids, times one over 12, times 67.5, uh, which is just this distance here to here, uh, times 360 to the third plus uh, for our area 67.5 times 360 and again uh, the distance of this void the centroid of this void is uh, collinear with the centroid uh, y bar here so our distance our di is zero uh, again that turns to zero so we worked that out. We really only have the um, I sub I uh, of the whole thing subtracted out by the I sub I of these two voids. And if we work all of that out, we get uh, the moment of inertia about the z-axis at the centroid of the member is 2.75 times 10 to the eighth millimeters to the fourth. 
All right, cool. So now we, we've got um, sort of our basic con um, uh, constant. So we, we know where our reference point is. We know that tau max is going to be largest at 200 millimeters uh, at Y bar. And we've got the I that we need for our VQ over IT. Uh, we can now start working through what the shear stress is in different parts of the section. So we're going to start with just the flanges. Um, and uh, a, a point to note is because our section's symmetrical um, and because our tau is all based upon a distance y from the centroid, uh, because that centroid's right in the middle, uh, we can actually have one equation we'll, we'll do double duty for here. So because we're symmetric, our shear stress distribution in the top is going to be the same as it is in the bottom flange. So uh, we only need to do sort of one equation to find out what our shear stress is in the flanges. And again, that only works because we've got symmetry uh, about the, the z-axis. So uh, I always find it's uh, helpful to draw out a picture uh, so you know what all your coordinates are doing, uh, particularly while you're learning. Uh, uh, if not, it's quite easy to get confused. So we know uh, right here in the middle at 200 millimeters up is where our uh, y-axis equals zero. Um, we've got 400 millimeters tall. Um, and what we're looking for in our shear stress, it's going to be anywhere from the top of the flange right to the bottom of the flange uh, this area in here, and that's going to be our distance uh, to the very bottom is going to be our distance y, and then uh, the centroid of this area, which is a1, that centroid uh, and the distance between this centroid and this centroid is going to be y1. Um, and we know that we're 150 millimeters wide. So um, we, we now have everything that we need. Uh, and so because this is with our flanges, uh, this uh, equation is going to be valid for when y uh, equals 180 millimeters to 200 millimeters and when y equals negative 180 millimeters to negative 200 millimeters. So again, 180 to 200 is just this distance 180 to 200 and negative 180 to 200. All right, so shear stress tau equals VQ over IT. Um, our shear stress, uh, just from the project brief, or from the problem brief, we saw it was 80 kilonewtons, so that's 80,000 newtons, times A1, Y1, over uh, I, which is 2.75, times 10 to the 8th, uh, times uh, the thickness of the section T, uh, which is 150 millimeters. All right, well, we just need to come up with what our relationship of uh, our area and that distance to the centroid of that area is as we move uh, between 180 millimeters and 200 millimeters. So that equals 80,000. Uh, for our area, well, it's going to be 150 millimeters wide, so 150, and then the height is just going to be, well, the, the furthest distance away, uh, 200 minus y, uh, that's our height right there, so simply 200 minus y. Um, and then the distance to the centroid is just going to be 
um, really, it's it's halfway between uh, Y and uh, 200 here, you know, the furthest distance away. So uh, let's just put that in. It's just that average there. So that's one half, half the distance between um, 200 plus Y. So just the average uh, distance between uh, Y at the bottom and 200 there, uh, divided by 2.75 times 10 to the 8th times 150. So let's go ahead and simplify. Uh, the 150s cancel out. Uh, the 1 half cancels out with the 80 and makes that 40,000. And uh, then if we rewrite this, uh, we can see that uh, tau flange equals 40,000 newtons times 200 squared minus y squared over 2.75 times 10 to the 8th. So now that we, uh, so that, that's going to be our, um, our equation for our shear stress in the flange. Uh, so now that we have that, well, let's find out what the shear stress is uh, at the top and at the bottom of the flange. So we, we see here, uh, because of this y squared, again, it's good confirmation that um, our shear stress distribution is varying parabolically, uh, like we would expect. So um, at the bottom of the flange uh, is where uh, tau equals either 180 or uh, minus 180. It's going to be the same value there. So uh, tau of 180, uh, and that's going to be you know, base of flange. That's going to equal 40,000 times 200 squared minus 180 squared divided by 2.75 times 10 to the eighth and we get tau of base flange equals 1.10 MPA. Well, that's useful. Um, and, and you can also see where if we plug in our maximum distance so at the top, if we plug in 200, we get 200 squared minus 200 squared. Uh, we get a shear stress of zero, uh, as we would expect. Now, uh, so this is, uh, you know, finding the shear stress uh, just using this, uh, uh, you know, equation which uh, defines the profile what if, we'll just draw it over here, uh, we just care about what the value is uh, right here at the base. So I say alternatively, um, let's just find that shear stress there. So, you know, tau base flange equals V Q over I T equals 80,000 times uh, for a one it's just going to be right at the base of the flange 150 um, 150 millimeters times 20 millimeters and then for our y1 uh, at the base of the flange that centroid is at um, half the distance, you know, here between 200 and 180, that's 190. Divided by 2.75 times 10 to the 8th times 150. And if you plug all of that into a calculator, uh, you get base flange 
equals 1.10 MPa. So as we said in the uh, in the last video, um, if you don't have a need to to know what to sort of program in what that distribution is, and you really only care about the values, uh, it's a much quicker means to simply go through and just uh, compute uh, the AI and the YI of a of a given area. So. Uh, well, now that we have the flanges, we need to come up with an equation for the web. Uh, and that's going to be our next step. So, tau and the web. So, again, here's our picture uh, just to kind of help us navigate uh, what's going on with the geometry. And um, so that's our uh, centroid at 200. And we know our flanges are 20 millimeters. Our distance from the centroid to the flanges is 180. And we've got 200 there. And we're 150 millimeters wide. So, with um, our, our area now, um, so if this is where our area, remember, uh, it goes back to that very first sort of intuitive description of our shear stress, um, where if we take a, a, a free body diagram cut here, uh, the shear stress here has to uh, uh, counteract the shear stress and that sort of bending stress, uh, which is arising from a moment, um, at, uh, uh, at this location. And so now our, um, our A1 is going to include both the web and, uh, and what, and the whole section of the flange. So it's whatever our distance. So this is our distance Y, uh, to, of, of the section that we are, are interested in, but then our, um, the centroid, of this uh, of this sort of block here um, is going to be uh, incorporating both web and uh, flange, so that's Y, I, um, and so um, this is really the only trick to uh, to doing shear stress with these sort of built up sections is remember that it, it's always going to be the area um, we'd say uh, above or you know below, so basically furthest away from the neutral axis. Um, all right, so tau equals VQ over IT. Uh, you can think about that as, so we know there's 80,000 kilonewtons in shear. We can think about Q as the summation of A1 times Y1. So it would be a1, Y1 of this top section uh, and A1, Y1 of this bottom section. And if you, uh, if you look back to say like the parallel axis theorem, um, it's a very, very similar uh, sort of um, uh, response. And that's, that's how we can find the centroid without you know, having to calculate the centroid every time. Uh, this is essentially uh, that portion of the, um, of, sorry, of, uh, of Y bar. Um, it's, it's really doing the same thing there. Um, and then our, uh, we've got I, which is 2.75 times 10 to the eighth. And then we have our width, uh, which width of the web is 15 millimeters. So we'll multiply, uh, that denominator by 15. So for our Q, if that equals the um, sum of A1, Y1, uh, well, let's work that one out. So for Q, that's going to be, well, this A1 of the flange. So that's uh, 150 millimeters wide uh, times 20. So you can think that's A1 flange. 
uh, times uh, the, you know, this Y1 of the flange. So that's going to be uh, 190. Y1 flange. Um, plus, and so we'll just put that in brackets just to help give it a, a little bit more visual distinction. Um, plus, uh, well, we need the area of the web. So the area of the web is going to be, we know it's uh, 15 millimeters wide. Um, and then the height is just going to be 180 minus Y. So that's A1 web. And now we just need Y1 web, uh, which is just going to be half the distance between Y and 180. Um, so we have one half. So it's that average there. So 180 plus Y. That's Y1 web. All right, well, that, that's it, really. That's, uh, that's the last piece of the puzzle. Um, everything else is really just algebra gymnastics to simplify this down into a, a more um, useful um, uh, sort of uh, formula here. But, you know, if we just write this out, you know, you've got tau web equals... 80,000 times 150 times 20 times 190 plus 15 times 180 minus y times 1 half times 180 plus y all over 2.75 times 10 to the 8th times 15. I mean, that's that, that has everything you need. I mean, we're, we just need this uh, in terms of, uh, of a distance y from the neutral axis, and, and that's what we have. So that's our, we only have one unknown and, and one equation. Um, it's kind of a messy formula, though, and so I think for uh, the sake of completeness, as well as for uh, one little exercise that we'll do right at the end of this, uh, let's simplify this down into a, a little bit more useful uh, format. So uh, what we'll do is we'll, we'll multiply out everything that can get multiplied out uh, nice and easy. Uh, so combine the 15 and the 1 half, uh, multiply all of these, so we end up with 80,000 times 5.7 times 10 to the fifth plus 7.5 times, and then we uh, multiply those out and we end up with 180 squared minus y squared. all over, and we'll multiply these two out, uh, 4.125 times 10 to the ninth. Uh, again, this is looking a, even just a, a bit better. We can see that it's definitely a squared value. Um, next thing we'll do, we'll just multiply the 80,000 to, to both of those. Um, and that will give us 4.56 times 10 to the 10th plus 6.0 times 10 to the 5th times 180 squared minus y squared all over 4.125 times 10 to the 9th. Um, and again, we'll just continue to simplify here. 4.56 times 10 to the 10th plus 1 point, uh, multiply these two out, we get 1.94 times 10 to the 10th. 
and then this times y is just going to be minus 6.0 times 10 to the fifth y squared all over 4.125 times 10 to the ninth. Uh, well, we can add these two together and then we can divide everything out by 4.125 times 10 to the ninth. Um, and that will give us tau on the web equals 15.76 minus 1.4 5 times 10 to the negative fourth times y squared. So that's our shear stress in our web. Um, uh, that's uh, that's good. Like I said, it wasn't too difficult. The only real trick there was to know that this uh, q is the summation of each of these uh, pieces uh, at a a distance uh, above y or you know if y is going down below y basically a distance further away uh, from the neutral axis than the section y which we're finding the shear stress at uh, so now that we have this well let's plug in some uh, some points so we'll do uh, tau end of web so we're we'll find the shear stress uh, just right here uh, where the web transitions into the flange. Um, and so that's the same as a tau of 180 because it's a distance 180 millimeters away from the centroid. Um, so that just equals 15.76 minus 1.45 times 10 to the negative 4 times 180 squared. Um, so tau and webs equals 11.1 MPA. Uh, let's do one, let's do one more and then we'll have just a, a real brief discussion. Um, so, uh, we'll just do tau max. Uh, so remember tau max is always going to occur at the centroid and that's where y equals zero. Uh, that's just our, our starting point. So tau max equals uh, tau sub zero. And that's going to equal uh, just uh, all of that goes to zero. So it's just going to be 15.76 MPA. So um, this, is, this is kind of interesting. We actually don't have that big a difference between our shear stress, uh, our maximum shear stress, and the shear stress at the ends of the web. So, I mean, if we look here, you know, we've got 180 millimeters difference, uh, and there's not a huge difference in shear stress, and you can even see that in the equation here. I mean, uh, this is our, our maximum shear stress, 15.76, minus 1.45 times 10 to the negative fourth, that's a really small number, times our, our distance away. And so what that's telling you is that for uh, these I sections, particularly them uh, which have the, the same width and same thickness web, so a, a doubly symmetric, so, you know, the, the webs have the same geometry. Um, sorry, I mean the, the flanges have the same geometry. You're going to have a very similar shear stress distribution. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll have one more look at that. But before we go into that, I just like with the flanges, uh, I just want to show you how to do this uh, as an alternative method. So if we, like I said, most of the time, we actually don't care what this pro what the equation of this profile is. Uh, we really care about, you know, what's the shear uh, at these at these two points. So uh, let's just quickly run through that um, uh, just to kind of show you uh, how to do that and, and just show you, uh, again, kind of um, if all you care about is the shear stress at a point, um, that it's a, a significantly quicker way to do this. So, so alternatively, um, remember we've got V tau equals VQ over 
it. Uh, so tau at ends of the web uh, is just going to be so the Q for that uh, is just uh, the A1 of the web uh, times uh, the distance between the centroid of the web to here, so that's 190. Um, and then the thickness is just going to be 15 millimeters of the web. So Q equals 20 times 150 times 190. Q equals 5.7 times 10 to the fifth. So tau end of web equals 80,000 times 5.7 times 10 to the fifth divided by I, which is 2.75 times 10 to the eighth times 15 for the thickness of the web here. So I uh, would just plug and chug there. Uh, we get and web equals 11.1 uh, MPA. That's the exact same as if we uh, use the, uh, the equation. Uh, and then if we just find tau max, um, again, uh, the, the only thing we need to really find here is, uh, is Q for our distance. So we know that our distance Y uh, at tau max is going to be zero. So our, uh, in fact, I'll, I'll just sort of draw down what we have uh, down on the bottom here. So we need to find uh, the contribution of the shear stress, you know, here. A1 flange uh, times that distance Y1 flange, uh, and then add in A1 web Y1 of the web. So Let's just do that. It's uh, it'll be pretty quick and, and pretty pretty straightforward. So for tau max, we have Q, uh, and that's going to equal twenty times one fifty times one ninety, and again, that's all flange. A1, Y1 of the flange, uh, and then we just add in 15 times 180 times 90. That's A1 web, and that's Y1 of the web. Um, and that'll give us uh, a Q equal to 8.13 times 10 to the fifth. So find tau max, it's just plug and chug at this stage. So tau max equals VQ over IT 80,000 times 8.13 times 10 to the fifth over I, which is 2.75 times 10 to the eighth times the thickness T, uh, which is 15. So tau max, uh, you can work all of that out and you'll find tau max will be just the same as from the equation, uh, and that's 15.76 MPA. So, um, the last thing I want to look at here is just do, you know, try to draw the shear stress distribution and, and I'll, I'll do my best to try and draw it to scale. Um, and, uh, and, you know, hopefully in drawing this, uh, we can, 
we can talk a little bit about uh, sort of what the distribution looks like for for eye sections, and then hopefully uh, you know gain a little bit of intuition for um, it, you know if we come across uh, eye sections again and and why we uh, analyze them the way that we do. So. I'll just uh, draw it out here. Um, and again, we're going to be just a little bit shorter than twice as tall as we are wide. And then if our centroid is here, and we'll just switch colors for our, um, our shear stress distribution. We'll just draw that in red. So uh, we'll draw a vertical line here. So we know our shear stress distribution uh, is going to be maximum here. And we know uh, that at the flanges, uh, these are points of interest for us. So uh, we found at the bottom of the flange, um, it, we had a shear stress distribution of 1.1 MPA, uh, and that's going to be the same top and bottom. And uh, we saw from our equation that it varies uh, parabolically. So and just here, uh, we know it's a y squared. We know it's a y squared, and we know that the shear stress is 1.1 MPA. Now, uh, when we transition into the web, uh, because we go to a much, much thinner section, our shear stress is going to shoot way up. If the web was thicker, uh, because our, you know, a stress is always a force applied over an area, a thicker web, we would have a, a smaller um, difference in our, in our shear stress. But uh, what we found from our web uh, was that the shear stress at the ends of the web is 1.1 MPA. So, um, Let's draw that, and it's basically going to come in, so sorry, 11.1 .1 MPA. Uh, so we're roughly about, we'll call it, we'll try to shoot for as close as we can to, you know, a little bit more than 10 times uh, this distance. It's a little hard to do freehand, but we'll, uh, we'll give it the best go that we can. So we know that's 11.1 .1 MPA. 11.1 MPA, and our tau max uh, was 15.76 MPA, so somewhere in here. And that's our shear stress distribution, and this is, you know, all the, sort of what our shear stress looks like as it goes um, uh, down, um, and then multiplied over by that thickness. Um, and that's tau max equals 15.8 uh, MPA. Now, um, you can kind of see just from this diagram that it looks like the web is carrying huge amounts, like the vast majority of the shear in this section. Um, and and that's, that's true. And this is why... Uh, if you remember back to our very first discussions with shear, uh, and when we looked at average shear, so if we had, you know, tau average, we were just saying that's V over A. Um, well, uh, this is why for when we analyze uh, an, an I section, so uh, if you go on and do steel design, or if you've got built up timber sections, uh, even with uh, sort of concrete I sections, it's often a, because uh, the design procedure is always, uh, tends to be iterative, uh, design engineers want to have uh, a, essentially a good approximation um, uh, when they're first selecting sizes. Um, and, you know, because you don't want to have to go through, you know, lots and lots and lots of calculations every time you're designing. So if you, for example, if you had to go through uh, design a shear section, uh, you did this, 
Uh, that didn't work. You had to go to a bigger size up. You go through all of this again. That didn't work. You went to a bigger size up. That's a lot of time. Um, and it's time which it was kind of, uh, kind of wasted because um, you didn't come any closer to, to you, your ultimate design. Um, instead, yeah, as a design engineer, what we want is something which is going to be uh, simple uh, and easy to do. So uh, for, a, um, for an eye section, often what's done is just uh, engineers will compute uh, tau average. Uh, with tau average... Uh, for an I section uh, just equal to V over the area of the web. And that makes sense. I mean, you look, that's where most of the shear is anyways. Um, and so, well, let's just go ahead and calculate that for, for this section. So tau average equals 80,000 newtons over uh, 360 millimeters between here and here, uh, times 15 millimeters uh, between, and we get tau average equals 14.8 MPA. So that's not too bad. That's basically saying that tau average is comes in uh, about here. So that's tau average equal 14.8 MPA. And if, if we just work out, well, what's the difference between tau average and tau max, you know, let's look at that ratio, tau average over tau max equals 14.8 over 15.8, uh, that's it gives us 93.7% um, of our maximum shear stress. And so particularly when we're doing a, a design and if um, for a lot of uh, beam problems, shear uh, demand often does not govern the section size, well, we want something that we know is going to be quick and it's going to check it. Uh, relatively easy and, and we see for an I section because we've got these flanges top and bottom um, you saw in the T section that you you had a shear stress distribution which kind of you know had a small bit in the flange and then it went uh, parabolic uh, and so you can see well if you've got a flange top and bottom so if you've got uh, material uh, which is perpendicular to your axis of load um, it's not going to contribute much in your shear capacity um, relative to what your your thick material is. Uh, also, because we have a relatively thin web uh, compared to uh, the overall width of the section, again, our shear stress is going to jump up there. Um, but it's a really efficient way uh, for for members to uh, to carry load. And this is why I you know I shape sections are used. Um, you'll think back to bending stress. Well, you know you've got your maximum bending stress uh, top and bottom and zero at the neutral axis. So uh, essentially your flanges carry your bending stress and your web carries your shear stress. Um, and so in fact, well, let, let's see, we'll just, um, before we wrap up with this uh, sort of example, uh, let's just, uh, let's ask that question. Um, sort of, you know, what percentage of shear is carried in the web. All right, so how do we do that? Well, we we have a, um, we already have a relationship for what this uh, shear stress is and um, and how that, how this profile varies uh, with depth, well, if we take that profile and we multiply it by the width, well, that gives us the area or sort of the, the kind of volume of shear which uh, is uh, being, of shear stress which is being acted over. 
well, then if we integrate all of that, well, we can get the total shear. And so that's that's how you want to find the area under a curve. All you do is you integrate under that curve. And uh, that's essentially what we're going to do. So we'll just say uh, tau of the web equals 15.76 minus 1.45 times 10 to the negative fourth y squared. So we, we found that out previously. Um, and then our thickness of the web is 15 millimeters. So, um, and, and we know this works for, you know, 0 to 180. It's y equals 0 to 180. So from uh, the centroid to here. Uh, so to figure out sort of this, you know, volume of, of stress, so the we integrate under here and then multiply by the width, well, we need to do two of those because uh, this profile gives us between here and here, So, but it's because it's symmetric, we can just double it. So uh, in order to find the shear, we just have uh, the shear in the web equals two times uh, the integral from zero to 180 of uh, 15 millimeters times 15.76 minus 1.45 times 10 to the negative fourth y squared. Um, if we then work that out, we get, so we integrate that, we get two times 15 times 15.76 times y minus 1.45 times 10 to the negative fourth over 3 y to the third plus c uh, 0 to 180. Uh, we plug this in. Our c's will cancel because we have uh, the stuff from the 180 minus C, so we have plus C minus C, so we know those cancel. Um, and then we just end up with 2 times 15 times 15.76 times 180 minus 1.45 times 10 to the negative fourth over 3 times 180 to the third minus 15 times uh, 0 minus 0 because we'll plug our, our 0 in here well, that goes to 0 0 cubed is 0 so we find that V in the web equals 76,700 newtons. So V web equals 76.7 kilonewtons. Well, let's find out what that is compared to the total shear. So V web over V total equals 76.7 divided by 80 equals 95.9%. So you can see that, you know, um, uh, just just kind of what we would expect from our shear stress distribution. Uh, if you work out the numbers, um, in the, the web is taking nearly 96% of the total shear in that section. And, and that's true for, for eye sections. And it's really because of that geometry. You've got the flanges don't contribute much uh, to the shear stress because they have a lot of area, um, but only a very little bit of depth. Um, and because Q uh, in our VQ over IT is all based upon the, the area above the section you're looking at, well, if you don't have a lot of depth and you have a small thickness, uh, you know, you've got tau equals vq over 
IT for a given section, V and I are the same, so Q uh, is just going to be that area above and T. So if you've got a big area, uh, a, a big width, T, uh, but then a small area above, it's not going to contribute a lot. Uh, while if you've got a, a large area, uh, but a really small um, thickness, well, you're going to have much, much higher shear stress. And so in turn, uh, carry much more of the shear in that section. So uh, that wraps up our, uh, our in-class uh, discussion of our uh, in-class example of the shear stress in a uh, doubly symmetric eye section. I hope you found that helpful. Um, I hope you found it more than just going through uh, the example uh, with some uh, uh, really, you know, just equations. Uh, I hope that you found, you know, in stopping and thinking about how those equations relate to the geometry and how that relates to the, the stress distribution and why we're able to do things like uh, only take the average uh, of the web. I, I hope that you've been able to sort of reflect on those as we've gone through, uh, and that will hopefully make you uh, a more intuitive engineer and, and help you get towards uh, what's going to be the, the best design um, quicker. All right. Well, thank you very much.